What's up to all my Cinema 4D users out there? Hi, Sachin Mishram here. And in today's tutorial, we are going to make a funny dancing animation using MiaXemo, mocap data and hair model in Cinema 4D. With a few simple tweaks, you can get an awesome result in very little time. Now, before we get started today, I wanted to remind you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share. Okay, let's go straight into today's tutorial. Let's jump into Cinema 4D. First thing, we will use the standard figure from Cinema 4D. To use this standard figure, first I am going to make it editable by hitting C on my keyboard. Then I will select children and then I will hit connect objects and delete. Doing all this will leave me with a single mesh. So we will take this one. Now we just need to export this character into obg file. So go to file, export, obg file. Keep the default settings. Press ok. Now go to miaxemo.com where you can rig and animate your character. But first, you need to log in. You can log in with your Google account. So, right now we are in miaxemo.com. Miaxemo has a library of thousands of full body character animations captured from professional motion actors. You can use both characters and animations royalty free for personal, commercial and non-profit projects. You can also upload your character model and rig it using Miaxemo's rigging tool, which is very easy to use and gives great results in no time. Now select this upload character option and just upload your obg file. You can simply drag and drop also. Select the obg file and drop it inside the Miaxemo. Yeah, it's successfully uploaded. Simply click on next. Now to rig our character, we need to place the markers on our model as shown in the diagram. Press next to start the auto rigging process. You can see auto rigging is in progress. Hardly it will take two minutes. So the rigging is done. Press next to confirm it. Now here on left side you can see so many animation presets. Just need to click one of them to use and apply on our character. So let me select uh, this one. This one I like. This is pretty cool. So once you finalize the animation, simply click on download. It will be saved in FBX format, which is a popular 3D data interchange format. Now here in Cinema 4D, go to file, click on merge and select the FBX file just downloaded from miaxema.com. Keep the default settings. Click OK. Yeah, if you hit the play button, you will see this. Mm, pretty good so far. We have everything completely ready for our hair model. Select the character mesh, then go to simulate, hair objects, and add hair. And yes, hairs are added to our character. So there are few things we will do just to prepare our scene and our hair. First, let's add a flow. I'm just going to add a cube. Scale up to the maximum. Just align this cube to his legs. 
then we will add a camera. Adjust the placement to focus on character. Alright, that's done. Finally, I will shorten the length of our guides so that we can kind of see what's going on. Okay. So the first thing that I will want to fix is we can see that all of our hairs are being generated from the vertices of our mesh. Instead, I will select polygon area. And then I will hit reroute. Now we have an even random distribution of hairs all over our character, which I think is better than just the uniform distribution of hairs on the vertices. With that done, we are ready to get into the hair settings themselves. I found that there are three main hair settings in Cinema 4D that I always rely on, even if I make a twix beyond them. Those are length, clump, and finally hair color. I normally work through them in that sequence as well. So let's start with length. I am also going to start selection render. Let's open up the hair material and then I will enable length. Right after that nothing happens. However, I am going to add a noise texture and immediately we can see a big change to some of our hairs now, longer than the others which is a much more natural look and more important than that i think it just looks a little bit cooler to have some randomness in our hair if we are losing too much length from our hair we can always bring some of that length back by lowering the high clip you can also get different looks by changing the noise type and the global scale i am actually going to leave these at default though i usually find that adding a noise is perfect Give me a little more detail on the length. Next up, clumping. Let's enable it. And again, we won't see a huge difference right after that. Enabling clump basically means that you will get these little clumps of hair on your character, which can give you much more textured look. I don't really like it personally when the hair looks really, really silky. And by adding a clump, you can add a little bit more detail. I usually use something like 30% uh, for the clump and then a variation of about 30% you can change the numbers to your liking though as you can see we already have a far more interesting looking hair simulation you can also play with other settings like twist to refine the look further finally let's go over color a really easy way to add super interesting color to your hair is to add noise into the texture. And then add a colorizer on top of that noise. So now our color is being driven by a noise pattern. If we click into the colorizer, we can load in this really great color presets that come with Cinema 4D. These are useful across a bunch of different types of projects. We can play around with all the different types. And once we have a color scheme that we like, we can actually dive into our noise texture. I usually use electric for the noise with hair, because it has this really great layer vibe to the noise. If you want something that isn't as crazy, you can kick up the global scale and get a more gradual gradient for the color. So now if I go back up a level to our colorizer, I can keep playing with the color until I get something that I like. When we have our final color, now let's tackle this character color hue. Now we are seeing through these hair colors to down to the character and that to me is not very good looking. So let's create another material here. And I'm going to go into the luminous channel and I'm just going to add in a little bit of like a blue like a uh, super dark so I'm just going to turn off reflectance I don't want it to be glowing through the fur I just want that if you see through the hair at all I want there to be something that there that is not just gray I'm going to turn on luminance and again just kind of pick this dark blue color and because the roots are blue now when we see through 
to the character it's not as visible in fact the reason i pink blue is mostly for it to just get out of the way right i want it to look like a big clump of fur so now it looks like a big clump fur and you can experiment with different color just to make sure it's not too bright and glowy so those are the main settings that i will use in pretty much every hair simulation i do even if i am going to tweak that hair simulation beyond just these settings i will still always use these settings but if you want to add some extra awesome there are few more things that we can do first i don't want the hair to fall into place when i started the simulation i just want the hair to lie flat on the frame one so i will run our simulation for a few frames and then i will go to simulate here i did set initial state now on frame 1 our hair will have this position next i will go to our guides and set our segments to 12 the higher we make this the more flexible our hair will be which is more realistic but it also increases processing time the last thing i usually do is make each individual hair a lot thinner my go to settings are point 1 for the root and point 05 for the tip then i will add a lot more hairs in this case i am going to change it from 5000 to 1 lakh changing the amount of hairs that you have as well as the segments for the guide and the thinness or thickness of the hair can really make your computer chuck so make sure to save and also try to find a good balance between killing your machine and still getting an awesome result so there you go those are our favorite hair settings for miyak simo character animation in cinema fold now let's add a area light to the scene position it here make area shadow you see we starting to get some shadows here from our light let's add one more light to brighten it up Let's add a merge layer to our floor, the cube. Make the material more reflective. So in reflectance, add reflection legacy. Then in layer one, in texture, add fractional. That gives us that nice look. Now just check the render settings. I wanted to make sure that we are all on the same page here. When you go to output, you can do an HD render. I am going to go uh, 1920 by 1080, and you want to make sure your hair renders are turned on. Usually the defaults are okay, and make sure you pick where you want to save. And the last thing. you want to do is go to your frame range and say all frames and check ambient occlusion is set also see if enter aliasing is set to best so that your render edges is not jack and are smooth now let's see render I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions in the comments below. Or always feel free to reach out to me directly. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please, please, please do. By the way, we have ton of other videos all about motion design and creating some really fun facts. Make sure you find the playlist, and I'm going to link that up as well. Also check the description 
will hopefully see you in some more videos all about design. I will see you in another video really soon. So thanks everyone. Bye.